to uh, ask about the powerful gender message at the end of the film, um, the gender and the, the women. And I wondered whether that came out uh, organically out of the film and the people you were talking about, or whether that was uh, initially part of something that you wanted uh, sort of a film to end. No, it, it grew organically. Um, most, most of the things do in the, in the film. Um, if I, um, I mean, I thought about it. We were going to show some things about how women have more power, more women are elected in other democracies. But um, as I said in the film, as we went to each country, we were shown or talked to or saw things that, because women actually have this kind of power, and it's not just Iceland where 40% of the corporate boards have to be women. It's, um, it's, that's the same in Norway. I think actually Norway started it. Germany now it's 30%. 30% of the corporate board has to be female. Um, so um, it just it just kind of became through my own sort of dime store political scientist looking at things that just seemed to kind of, well, you know, just if you noticed in these countries where women have real power, not the fake power that, we, that women have here. Um, you know, we're 20% of our Congress are women. The majority gender, 51, 52% of the population is 20% of the Senate and 20% of the House. Um, and the sad thing is, is, for historians 100 years from now, it said we've left behind film and videotape showing ourselves being really happy that 20 women got elected to the U.S. Senate. And it's like they're the majority gender, and uh, the minority gender has 80 seats. In other in past times, that was had, there was a word for that. Um, so we don't use that word when it comes to things like that, sort of gender apartheid that we have in this country. So, um, so yeah, it just kind of came organically, like a lot of things do. I, I don't know if you. I, don't, I mean, you're not with me while I make these films, so you don't see how we do this, but, but don't give me too much credit for thinking this out uh, a whole lot in advance. Um, we don't think, geez, would it be cool if I took a, a can of Coke in and sat it down on the lunch table to see what the kids do? It was like, I want a fucking Coke, and uh, <laughs> there's still vending machines in the school. <laughs> so I asked my assistant, like, she had to run into town, give me a Coke. <laughs> and it's just sitting there, and I, that, so, so much of like when that happens, it happens. The thing at the Berlin Wall at the end was absolutely not planned to be in, in the film. It was not going to be the ending because we hadn't heard from everybody along the way as they told us more than even what I put in in terms of, hey, we got this idea from the U.S. or there's this think tank in the U.S. where we sent our people and they, you know, these progressive educators came up with this stuff. And we just kept hearing this over and over and over again. And um, the Berlin Wall was only because uh, uh, Rod, who was the executive producer of the film, and who also had got a year rail card and, and a youth hostel card, and we were friends back then too, and I was, you know, we were friends since I was 17. Um, and so all through these years, we've always talked about doing something around this idea of, because if you ask, if you have traveled in other countries, haven't you had that moment where you go, why don't we do that? It's such a simple idea, little ideas, little teeny tiny ideas. Why don't we do that? And um, uh, so basically he was there and we were in Berlin and mostly just for nostalgia, we thought it would be cool to have just for like our scrapbook, let's shoot some video of us at the wall 26 years later from that night we were there accidentally in Berlin. Again, not just a random thing, not because I needed a coat, but just because we were in Berlin and you know, we just randomly were there and heard this was going on, and we went down there. And we thought, while well, we're here shooting in Berlin, this other German stuff, why don't we just go down there and take some pictures and we'll just walk along and reminisce and we'll give this to the grandkids someday, you know. <laughs> that was really all that was never intended to be in the film. So, so, uh, so you know, we shoot a lot of stuff and we, we just kind of see what happens. I find the best stuff is the stuff I don't plan out. And the stuff that my field producers do in terms of um, the research, I have them tell me only the basics. I don't want to know. I do not want to know any of the research. So, for instance, when the Italian couple says to me that the, they get their honeymoon paid for, 15 days, and you see my reaction, like, you know, like Whoa. <laughs> that's real. I'm hearing that for the first time. 
even though my producers may have known that. They have we've done this for so many years now. You preserve your own spontaneity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't, I don't, don't say, can't your sniffer tell if I'm acting? I mean, I hope you can. So, so I don't want to act. I really want that to be real. We don't do a second take. We don't do. Uh, oh, if the, if the sound guy says I didn't know there was a plane going, we didn't get that. We didn't get it then. I'm, I, you can't ask the people you're in. They're not actors. If you ask them to do it a second time, they try to act, and then you know it, and it sucks. And you've seen too many documentaries like that. And so this is all. It has to kind of happen in the moment. And it has to happen with me in the moment uh, uh, too. Um, and so. You know, that's why sometimes if I say something that's funny, it's funny, and sometimes it's not so funny, but it's just what I said, you know. So I'm not trying to go for, hey, hey, writers, get, yeah, get me a funnier line, <laughs> you know, so.